Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Kenton High School, where tonight in a WBL showdown, the Kenton Wildcats welcome in the Defiance Bulldogs. Well, everyone, I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. And, Gilly, a big matchup here in the WBL tonight. Let's take a look at Defiance first. Four and one overall, three and one in the WBL, clearly in the thick of a conference title. Absolutely. You know, one game back right now, trailing Salina. But uh, they had one hiccup, and that was two weeks ago to uh, Van Wert losing by a single point. You know, they bring a, a, a potent running attack as well as a very athletic quarterback to the forefront. And if you look at their starting lineups, they're junior dominant, so they've got a bright future for them coming in. For the home team, the Kent Wildcats, Gilly, it's never a problem scoring points for the Wildcats. They are led by a fantastic young man, Corbin Johnson, the young junior quarterback. They just can't stop anybody on defense. No, defensively, they're, they're, they're struggling to stop the football. You know, and, and, you know, like you said, Corbin Johnson right now is putting up, you know, phenomenal numbers for this junior. You know, he, he struggled a bit as a sophomore last year, but, man, is he taking the, the – the, the bull by the horn, so to speak, and he's not only, you know, doing it in the air, he's doing it with his feet also. Tonight's pregame sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Gilly, it's going to be a good one. we got great weather. It's homecoming tonight here at Kent. It's the Wildcats and the Bulldogs. You're watching high school sports right here on WLSA. Welcome back to Kenton Senior High School. Danny Obert, Darren Gilbert for tonight's homecoming contest between the Wildcats of Kenton High School and the visitors of the Defiance Bulldogs. Defiance will kick off first, and Gilly couldn't get a better night for high school football. Oh, it's unbelievably <laughs> nice. we got a nice crowd, two terrific bands, and it's going to be a very entertaining game. A low squib kick there that goes to the 25. It's picked up by the Wildcats. They'll go to the sidelines. He's got a crease. He goes up the sidelines. He's going to be knocked out about the 45-yard line, and that was number one for the Wildcats. Preston Collins, the 6'2 senior, and he gives the Wildcats great field position. Yeah, give a lot of credit to Carson DeLong, number 13, for that block there to spring him for another 15 yards. So here come the Wildcats. They're led by junior quarterback Corbin Johnson. He's 141 of 206 on the season for 1,726 yards, 10 touchdowns. And the important thing, Gilly, is he's only thrown three interceptions. He takes care of the ball. He takes care of the football, and he is getting some protection, you know, with those front five. Here's Corbin Johnson in the gun. He's got two to the left, two to the right. We got our first flag of the night, and we got a false start on one of the linemen up front. So not the start the Wildcats wanted as they'll go back five yards. And you're going to see a lot of five wide motion with the Wildcats. Oh yeah, they're going to dink it. They're going to dunk it. You know, they're going to throw it in the flat, get it to their athletes, and let them, you know, try to get as many yards as they can. The other thing too, Gilly, about Corbin Johnson, he's also the leading rusher for this team as he's got a thousand, or excuse me, 565 yards already and nine touchdowns on the run. There's Johnson as he fumbles the ball. He gets it out to Collins. He gets it up to a gain of about uh, maybe a yard back up to the original line of scrimmage. Appeared to, appeared to be, excuse me, Rubio. So Irizarry on yeah. the stop. The Wildcats are going with no huddle right now. This is Johnson in the gun. He's got three to the right. He's going to throw to the right side to the middle. He's got his man out there, number 25. That is Maddox Hummel. He finds his man right across the top, and that brings up third and about nine for the Wildcats from the 48. Rubio on the stop for the Bulldogs. Johnson's in the gun. He's got three to the right. He's got a man in motion, one to the left. He'll take the snap. He looks across the field. He's under some pressure. He's going to roll out of the pocket. He's going to pick up the first down, and that he does. He picks up a root lumber first down. Root lumber in Kenton has everything you need to get the job done, whether you're a contractor or a do-it-yourselfer. Visit us at rootlumber.com. Root lumber is our first down sponsor. You know, his ability to run with the football, you know, opposing coaches are almost going to have to put somebody to spy him because he's he's really dangerous. He did a good job getting down there sliding. So there's another flag as a uh, Going to have some more motion up front. Another false start. Our first quarter sponsor tonight for the broadcast is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial service needs. Visit your statebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So 
39 to go. Wildcats get the ball. One first and 15. This is Johnson. A little shovel pass up the middle. And a great play by the Defiance defense. That was number 17 for the Joey Bulldogs. Robinson. Joey Robinson, leading tackler in the WBL. Derrick. You want to talk about a disciplined play right there. He stayed at home, read to play. Because if he don't make that tackle partner, He's going to get a breakaway there, 10, 15, 20 yards. Joey Robinson has 62 tackles this year, leading the WBL, number one in the WBL. There's another swing pass out to number 12 for the Wildcats, Grady Clement Beasley, and he's the leading receiver for this Wildcat club. Yeah, Rodenberger on the stop along with appeared to be number six, Rubio. Gilly, if you've never seen Kenton play football, this is like basketball on grass. It's just nonstop oh, yeah. coming at you. Yeah, they, and they, they put a lot of pressure on the defense. Oh, absolutely. They want to take and score as quickly as you can. They want to put the defense at a disadvantage where the opposing teams have got to try to keep the football out of Kenton's hands. Bring up third and eight from the 37. Johnson's in the gun. He's got two to the left, two to the right. He'll take the snap. He looks across the field. He's going to throw off to the left. He's got a man out there, just outstretched arms of number 12, Grady Clayman Beasley. And that'll bring up fourth down at the 37 yard line. I'm assuming they're going to go for it with his offense the way they run. Yeah, that was a really good job of putting a little pressure bearing down on him. Joey Robinson, along with the number 58, Kazen Phillips, forced him to throw the football just a little bit too early. Just couldn't time it up between the, the pitch and catch. The first big decision of the night here. The Wildcats are going for fourth and eight. He's got his man across the middle. And a nice pitch and catch to number 12, Grady Clayton Beasley. And there you saw the connection between Johnson and Beasley. Yeah, they found the seam and attacked it. Rodenberger on the stop. That'll bring up another root lumber first down. Wildcats marching down the field, first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Yeah, that was a big hit right there he took by Rodenberger. Our instant replay sponsor tonight is Home Savings and Loan of Kenton, committed to serving our community since 1888, offering infinite opportunities and services. You can count on Home Savings and Loan, member FDIC, equal housing lender. So Johnson looks across to the coaching staff, waiting for his call. It looks like a little confusion on the sideline. Coaches uh, seem to be a little upset, but the play does get in. Johnson's in the gun. High snap, he's going to look, he's going to roll to his right. He's going to take it across the line of scrimmage and he's just going to go down. Uh, not much of an opportunity there for the Wildcats as the Defiance defense stayed at home. Yeah, I was a little worried he was going to carry that like a loaf of bread and get it stripped, <laughs> right. but he did a real good job securing it and sliding to the ground. Abel Rubio with a stop on that one. Brings up second and seven from the 16. Johnson's in the gun. He's got trips to his left and he's got two to the right. He's going to look off to his left. He's got his man out there. That's Collins and Collins just falls down. Nice catch, but Collins just slips, and uh, we'll give that credit to the uh, to the grass. To the grassy area? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you know, looking over here on the sidelines, that shot that Beasley took on that first down reception, you know, it's he's got him here standing over here on the sideline getting a drink. Here's Johnson's going to keep it himself, call his own number. He goes up the middle, and that's going to bring up another fourth down. Darren, this defiance defense, they do give up quite a few points. They give up 18-4 a game. Uh, now, fortunately for them, they score a lot, too, at 31.2 a game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've got a, a very prolific quarterback in, in themselves and Ziffel and the ability to put points on the board. Yeah, it's a carbon copy, really, defensively. Yeah, yeah. I looked at the stats, and they're, they're I think it's like fourth and fifth in the league defensively for – uh, yardage. And there's Johnson. He's going to pick up another root lumber first down. That's two fourth down opportunities. Kenton's capitalized on as they continue the march into the red zone. Yeah, that's big. The clock continues to run 7.30 as Kenton has used the entire quarter here uh, to run their offensive plays. Here comes Johnson. He's looking to his right. He's going to throw back to his left and throws it away. And there you see the, the, the wise move from Johnson there. It's maturity. He, absolutely. That's a great call. You know, that's an interception last year or as a freshman that's that shows you how far he's come along he just threw that one into the ground smart play Darren, they run a lot of empty backfield you re very rarely will see a tailback or a fullback in the backfield for the Wildcats no you're not going to see that you know in years past they did put somebody yes. back there but that tells that tells you there's a little bit of confidence in the offensive line that there's Beasley's got that in it Beasley catch Beasley. out there and he's going to try to get in the end zone and he does and that's a Wildcat touchdown the Kenton Wildcats score first with 7.15 to go as Corbin Johnson strikes across the field to Beasley for six points in a Wildcat lead. You know, that last three or four yards was all Mr. Clayman Beasley right there. He got, got ahead of steam up and cracked the defender and broke the tackle and found his way 
across that end line. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. So here comes Kenton as they'll go for two, and they've got him bunched up four wide on the right side. Johnson looks, he's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be taken down and no two-point conversion. So with 7.15 to go in the first quarter, the Kenton Wildcats strike first, and they lead this one 6-0. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Kenton High School. It was 7.15 to go. The Kenton Wildcats lead the Defiance Bulldogs six to nothing. And Gilly, it's been a while since I've called a game for Kenton football. It's, it's, you gotta catch your breath because it's just coming at you in it's waves. It's unique, isn't it? It really is. You know, Defiance did what they had to do. They put Kenton in two fourth down situations. Exactly. You know, but the quarterback made two excellent decisions for Kenton and continued the drive and they were able to punch that in. Let's see what Defiance does now. So there's a squib kick, and it's caught up by authority by number 22 for Defiance. Number 22, and that is Mitchell Taylor. And uh, I don't know if that was intentional or just come off the side of his Well, I there. think I think one of the, the, the weak spots Kenton has is, is their kicking game. You can tell by them going sure. for two points, and obviously the kicking game is uh, after touchdowns well, or comes. just kicking off. Pardon me. Um, I'm trying to get my thought together. Uh, <laughs> They're, they're really struggling to find a, a kicker that's consistent. So here come the Bulldogs, first and 10 from the 37-yard line. They'll hand the ball off to the first man up front. He gets a nice gain, and he's going to take the pile up to about the 45-yard line. That's number six for the Bulldogs, Abel Rubio, the junior tailback. The Bulldogs are led on the field by number four, Brez Zipfel. The junior quarterbacks, 35 to 62 for 530 yards, eight touchdowns and two interceptions. He's also rushed for 142 yards, so a multi Oh, you're like him. He's, yeah. he's very, very, very uh, good with both the pass and the run. This is Zipfel as he throws off to the left. He's got a man out there and drops the ball. He dropped it. Anthony Wilder, the junior wide receiver, had it in his hands and just dropped it. Yep, got a little quick. That's one of those you got to secure before you turn and burn. And he played a little peekaboo action and tried to turn before he had security to football. The Bulldogs come in averaging 31 points a game. Offensively, they rushed the ball for 186 yards a game, and they passed for 137. So a really balanced offense here as they are 4-1 overall, 3-1 in the WBL. Here goes a handoff to the right side, and a nice gain as he goes across midfield. Number 11, Anthony Wilder, a little sweet toss there, and Anthony Wilder picks up another root lumber first down. Kobe Howard on the stop for the Wildcats. Yeah, but what he did really well is he cut back to the to grain of the football field, the way the defense and the offense found that hole, and he did a good job exploding through there. So don't look now, but here comes Defiance as they cross midfield, down 6-0 with 6.18 to go. And this is a wild first quarter action here from Kenton High School. Here come the Bulldogs and a big run up the middle. And there you see number six, Abel Rubio. And there you see the inconsistency in the Kenton front line as they are getting gashed right now for 12 and 13 yards of carry. Yeah, if your secondary is your leading tacklers on the evening, yeah, like that's a good word, gash, because they're just getting chunks and chunks of yardage right now with the running game, especially you know, between the tackles. It's funny, Brogan Castile doesn't start, but he is the number one running back in terms of attempts and yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, and I think he's in street clothes yes. tonight. Yeah, we we're going to mention that. He is not playing right now. So here comes Zippel, and he is taken down, and there you see that great job by the Kenton defensive line as they sack Seth, Zippel. Seth, Seth Leffler on the stop. Say that name about four or five times Seth Lepler, real nice quick. Job. But yeah, what a play there by that young man. He'd been, he was dinged up earlier this season, so he's just getting back into the flow of things. But he had a really good year last year for them at the linebacker spot. Kenton's got some big men up front. Bill Wilkinson, 6'2", junior, 255 pounds. There's a little toss sweep off to the right. Here come the Bulldogs up the right side as they're going to take it. And he gets taken out of bounds, number 45 for the Bulldogs. That is Jordan Wright, the sophomore defensive back wide receiver, and a nice big pickup for the Bulldogs. You know what that reminded me of? The Bulldogs in green and white, they do the same yeah, thing. They right. pull yep. that guard, and I'm telling you, you better be ready as a defensive back because they're going to try to steamroll you. That is another root lumber first down that'll bring up first and 10. Wildcats, it looks like they're going to take a timeout. 
a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here on the booth. You're watching high school football. Welcome back to Kenton High School here at Robinson Field with 5.07 to go. The Wildcats lead 6-0. But big developments right now, Darren, for the Kenton Wildcat offense. Yeah, tr you know, the Trevor, uh, I said Trevor, Trevor's his father. But uh, Clayman Beasley's on the sidelines again. That's the second time. He took a shot right there, tried to bounce up, and, you know, he's on the sideline again. But that's the second time tonight after he got the touchdown, he went back in again to the game uh, defensively, and let's see how long he's gonna maintain over here. He's gotta be dinged up coming into this game, you would think. So here come the Bulldogs with Zippel in the gun. It's 5.07 to go. They'll hand the ball off to Rubio, and he is taken down, and wow. The two plays in a row there where you see, excuse me, two out of three plays in a row there where the Kenton defensive line really exerts itself as they take down Abel Rubio. Well, they're a much better team defensively, it appears to be, when they can put their linebacker that came back from last year, Seth, there, because he, he's had some experience. But yeah, the, the other kids are stepping up defensively right now. Here's Zippo in the gun. He takes the snap, looks across the field. He's going to roll off to his right, throws back to his left in the middle. He's got a man on the It's picked off, picked off in the end zone, and here come the Wildcats, picked off by number nine. Here's Kobe, Kobe, Kobe Howard. Howard on the stop. I think he was coming in with two interceptions, if my memory serves me correctly. That'd be his third on the season. And there you see Zippel rolling to his right, tries to throw back to his left, never a good situation. But not only that, Darren, he tried to throw into the end zone. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised he didn't tuck and try to get as much as he could, you know, to that marker, that first down marker. But, you know, he, he felt like he could get it there with enough air and enough steam on it. And it just come up a little bit short, but Kobe Howard with a great job defensively stepping in front of that errant so, football. We did not talk a lot about it during pregame or the start of this game, but we, you know, turnovers in a game like this with two similar offenses is huge. And right now, Kenton leads the turnover. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that keeps when you can keep an opponent out of the end zone and get the football back, leading, you know, with the score and getting it back and getting ready to charge down the field with their offense, it's big. So here come the Wildcats, first and 10 from the nine yard line. I, he almost would have been better served to take the knee in the end zone and bring it up to the 20, but he tried to run it out, which is just competitive nature of the young man. There's Johnson as he finds a man off to the right and he's got him out there. That's number 13. It's actually Blaine Bushong. Blaine Bushong is in the game right now, quarterbacking for the, for the Kenton Wildcats. Yeah, I'm trying to see, look along the sidelines. Yeah, I don't see Johnson anywhere. He's not on the bench. Yes, uh, is this him with the trainer right here? Yes, it is. He's on the trainer's okay. table, and they are stretching him out. So let's hope that young man is okay. So Bushong takes the ball, looks across. He's going to throw off to his left, and he's got a man oh, out there. What a throw. And a nice throw by Bushong as he gets it to number 12. Brady Clayman Beasley. Darren, he dropped that in there like, like he'd been doing it his whole life. Well, he's had varsity experience. You know, they give him an opportunity last year at the varsity level. So he's he's going to come into this game raring to go and with that varsity experience that you need, especially as a backup. Blaine Bushong, the 5'8 sophomore, 150 pounds. He's in the gun. He's going to throw off to his right. He's got a man out there, another nice catch. That reception is made by number 25 for the Wildcats, Maddox Hummel. Rodenberger on the stop. You, you know what I've noticed about this, and I think you said it earlier, Darren. The Wildcats, they will, they, they they dink and dunk, and everything's you know it's it's quick they're passes. Set you, they're set yeah. you up. Yep, it's quick passes, and then and when you do come up to the line, they'll run you deep. They'll run you deep, or they'll run you down the seam. Here comes Bush on second and eight from the 28. He's in the gun. He looks across the field. He throws off to his left. He's got a man out there. And he gets tackled at about the 37-yard line. Complete to Maddox Hummel, number 25, a 5'9 freshman. So you're seeing a lot of freshmen and sophomore here for the Wildcats, so the future bright for the Wildcat program. I was very impressed right there with that open field tackle by Logan Hutchinson from Defiance. There's Bushong in the gun. He's got trips off to his right. He's got two to the left. Third and three from the 33. Bushong's going to keep it himself. He's going to pick up another root lumber first down as he tries to avoid the defense, and he gets almost to the 40-yard line. So a nice run by Blaine Bushong. Yep, very light on his feet. Good vision. Good job finding that first down marker. 
for the Wildcats. So all Kenton Wildcats right now in the first quarter as they continue to lead six to nothing, 235 to go here from Robinson Field in Kenton High School. This is Bush on in the gun. He's going to throw in the middle. He's got a man out there and threw into double coverage. And that's the first time we've seen Bushong. Probably an ill-advised throw on that one. Yeah, very fortunate because there was two defenders right there on that football. If you're going to miss, he missed the right way. <laughs> you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So that'll bring up second and 10 from the 38. And we look down at the trainer's table. And starting quarterback Corbin Johnson is being tended to by the training staff. Let's hope that young man is able to get back on the field. Until then, Bushon will lead this offense. He's got one receiver to his left, and he's got trips to the right. He takes the ball. He's going to roll it up, and they're going to stop play, and there's another flag on the play. Another false start. That's the third false start from the Kenton offense. Yeah, those are the things you got to clean up, especially in week six. Those can mount up for you. The advantage that Kenton has, though, they can get that back at any time with one simple pass Absolutely. or a quarterback draw. Well, here's the thing, too. It also keeps that defiance defense on the field a long time. Sure does. You see those kids already gasping a little bit for air. Now to bring up second and 15 from the 33. Bushong's rolling. He's going to throw deep down the sideline, and he misses a man. His intended target for number six, and that is Carter Haney. Tay, really good job defensively by the linebackers and the DBs of defiance taking away those receivers that tried to run out into the flat. Just a good job there defensively. That'll bring up the first third and long for Kenton. At third and 15 from the 33, 2.21 to go. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Kenton High School. Key WBL showdown here tonight. As the home team Kenton Wildcats celebrating homecoming tonight. Here's Bushong. He's under heavy pressure. He's gonna throw to the right. That's a floater It almost picked off. My goodness. He really threw that one high as it floated. Almost picked off by number five for the Bulldogs. And that's that was Garrett Rodenberger. Rodenberger. Yeah. yeah. Well, he had some pressure bearing down on him right there. It appeared to be uh, Zane Phillips with the pressure right there. That'll bring up punting situation for the Wildcats. Number 20, Sam Taylor, the 5'10 senior, in to punt the ball away. So there's the snap, kick is up. He fielded about the 40 yard line. Wilder catches the ball. He's gonna be taken down by a host of Wildcats. And there's a flag on the play. Oh, excuse me, not a flag, that was the marker. I'm sorry, I thought it was a flag. Yeah, Trent DeLong right there from Kenton. Good job on that field coverage on that punt. So that'll bring up Defiance's second offensive opportunity tonight. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. Yeah, I'm curious to see what the game plan is going to be on this series for the Bulldogs. As Ziffel is in the gun, he's flanked off to his left by number six, Abel Rubio. He's going to hand the ball to Rubio. Rubio takes it right up the middle and a good run of about three to four yards. And there you see that Defiance offensive line flexing their muscles a little bit as he picks up four, they'll make it second. Oh, excuse me, they're gonna credit him with five yards, second and five from the 44-yard line. Tim Wilkinson on the stop. Got him by the ankles, dropped him. Five yard gain, second and five. If you can get five yards every crack that's running a, the football, that's, yeah, that's going to be paid, well, play not, huge dividends for not, you. Yeah, not only that, Darren, but it does keep the Kenton offense off the field if they sure can does. continually run the ball. Yep. Here's Zippo in the gun. He's got Rubio flanking to his left, Wilder to his right. He's going to hand the ball to Rubio, and Rubio picks up, uh, oh, close to a first down. Let's see if they credit him with a first down. Good hard run there by that young man. And they are, they're gonna say, it was another yes, root lumber first down. So there you saw Abel Rubio, two runs in a row, 10 yards <laughs> for the two runs combined. So nice production there by the offensive line from Defiance. Yeah, he's on his way to a big night running the football. They'll bring up first and 10 from the 50 yard line with 106 to go. Zippo looks across, as he's under pressure. He's gonna roll to his right. And he'll throw it away, and a nice play by Brez Ziffel as he had no one downfield, and he throws it away. Yeah, that was a real good job by Kyle Thrush, you know, keeping him from breaking away down that sidelines. About that time, 
he started coming in there, bearing down on him, made Ziffel throw it away. And a great job by Kyle Thrush of holding off and not taking the shot at him because he had he had a chance to really oh, hit yeah. hard. He was coming hard, but he understood the situation. Yeah, that was a smart football play right there. Here's Ziffel in the gun. 58 seconds to go. They're going to hand the ball to Rubio, and Rubio's taken down immediately, and a host of Kenton Wildcats led by number 56 for the Wildcats. That is Eli Cobble. Eli Cobble. Wow, what a good job by them young men. You know, he whacked himself in the head, but I'll tell you what, his penetration right there, getting his hand on that running back, slowed him down enough for his teammates to come in and clean it up. They bring him third and 11 for 49. Zipple's in the gun. Should be the last play of the first quarter. He's going to hand the ball to Reno. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to look down the middle. He's got a man wide open, and there he goes. And that is going to be a defiance touchdown. Zipple's pass to number 45, Jordan Wright, is on the money for a connection of 45 yards, and that'll tie it up at six apiece. Yeah, got him right in stride down the seam. Just outran the defender for the touchdown. Great execution there. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton, online at kentonmoose428.com. So Defiance will go for two. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got right to his right and able to his left. As he's going to look to pass the ball, and he's got a man wide open as they convert. And that was number two for the Defiance Bulldogs, Brady Borton. And that will make it eight to six. With 18.3 seconds to go. Watching high school football. Welcome back here to Kenton High School, where we're seeing a lot of offense right now. As it is eight to six with 18.3 seconds to go in the first quarter. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert. And Gilly there, you saw the high-powered offense and defiance we talked about all night. Well, that's the arm of Ziffel. His, you know, he stepped up in the pocket, got great protection. He did. You know, surrounding him. And you know what, if you don't put him on his back, he's gonna pick you apart. Just like defiance has gotta put some pressure on Kenton's quarterback too. Because if you let either one of these quarterbacks get their feet set, they're dangerous. So here's Chase Camasso kicking the ball off for the Bulldogs. It's a low line driver that goes to about the 22 yard line. It'll be picked up by the Wildcats. And bring it up to about the 30 yard line. That's where his forward motion will stop. So with nine seconds to go, let's see. And it is Corbin Johnson coming back on the field for the Wildcats. So that is great news for this Wildcat offense. Yeah. I'm not so sure maybe it's a back issue because he was really working on his hips. And not that Blaine Bushong did a bad job. He did a great he job. He did a really in. good job. A really good job. He found some uh, good passes. And, uh, but, you know, offense is comfortable with the starter in there, so that will bring out Corbin Johnson. Well, and you got to give credit to Defiance and their ability to get a stop there. So Johnson's in the gun. He's got two to the left, two to the right. He's got a single set back. First time we've seen that tonight. Johnson's going to take the ball. He's going to hand off to the first man up front. And that is number, let's see, number 18 for the Wildcats, Alex Rogel. And that will end the first quarter. So after one quarter of play from Robinson Field, the Defiance Bulldogs lead 8-6. to six. When we come back, we'll have second quarter action right here on WLSC. Welcome back to Robinson Field. Ken Wildcats second and eight in the 31. Johnson's got his man across the right side. And they're going to pick up another root lumber first down. So Corbin Johnson back in the game finds Maddox Hummel for a first down. Joey Robinson on the stop. The leading tackler in the WBO, Darren. He is everywhere. Fantastic young linebacker for the Bulldogs. First and 10 from the 44th, 11.35 to go. Kenton down eight to six. Johnson's gonna hand the ball off. And goes to about two yards. Alex Rogel with the ball carry. Two yards on the carry. Bring up second and eight from the 46 yard line. Now we're seeing a little ball control offense there. They've handed the ball off more here in the last possession than they've done sure all night. Have. Salinas on the stop there for the blue and white. 
Here's Corbin Johnson as he takes the snap, looks across the middle, fires deep, and he's got a man down there, just outstretched arms of number 25, Maddox Hummel. And wow, that would have been a big play there. Well, he took a shot. I don't know if you saw that or not, but guess who? <laughs> Joey Robinson. Joey Robinson, yeah, he, he got a shoulder pad into him. If you give you know Corbin another half a second, that, that's a complete pass. Yeah, that was a really nice play designed by the Wildcat offense as they had their man streaking down the left side. It's just the pressure right there of Robinson. Third and eight from the 46. Johnson gets the ball, looks across, he throws it back, and he's got a man out there and a really nice pass as he gets the pass out to number 26, Zane Perkins. And wow, there you saw the touch on the pass, Dan. I got faked out because I thought he was going to the other receiver. <laughs> well, he put it over the outstretched arms of the defender and the safety who was helping well, back. And, but you know what? The, kid, the receiver, Perkins had no idea where the football was in, in, in somebody watching but he knew exactly where it was because when he turned around, <laughs> he it was did. right on top of it. You're right. That makes it first and 10, another root lumber first down. First and 10 from the 42-yard line. They'll hand the ball off to the back up front. This is number 18 for the Cats, Alex Rogel, with another carry as they keep that defiance defense honest. They'll pick up about four yards. It'll make it second and six. There you see Alex Rogel running hard through that front line, Darren. Yes, yes, they are. Areola on the stop. Yeah, that's impressive. I mean, he put his shoulders down, got his got his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. Here's Rogel again as he picks up another root lumber first down. Alex Rogel right now taking over this offense. Uncustom to see the Wildcats run like this, but they are they have found something. Obviously, something they're really happy with. Yep, something up front has tipped them off, and they're attacking that area. Rubio on the stop. Here's Johnson in the gun, first and 10. Another root number first down, first and 10 from 31. Johnson in the gun. He's got two to the left, two to the right. He'll put up, his back will go up into the slot position. Johnson looks across the field. He's going to throw down the left sideline. He's got Collins out there just outside the outstretched arms of Collins, and he had him down the left side, Darren. Yeah, he was starting to feel some pressure again. He had to release a little bit early. Appeared to be Phillips with some pressure in the backfield. Give give credit to the defender, stride oh, for stride. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Preston Collins right there. Bring him second and 10 to 31 with 9.45 to go. Co excuse me, Johnson in the gun. Hand off, right up the middle. Again, number 18, Alex Rober. Picks up about three yards. Yeah, Ruby, Rubio, part, pardon me, partner, Rubio had him in the backfield, just couldn't secure him, but he slowed him up enough to get help from his teammates. And, and this is what you want. Yeah, absolutely. This is, Kent will go no huddle again. Johnson in the gun, third and six from the 27-yard line. Johnson steadies himself, looks across at his offensive coordinator, waiting for the appropriate play, 9-12 to go. He's got two to the left, two to the right. Johnson takes the snap. He looks to the right. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to keep it himself. And he gets a nice game. It looks like he did get another close. root lumber first down as they're moving the chains. Yeah, smart decision right there. Didn't panic. First down, Wildcats. You saw He's him, dinged up. Yeah, you saw him go to the right, Darren, and he did a really nice job of stepping up in the pocket to avoid the penetration. Sure did. But you can tell something's, something's in his extremities yeah. right now because he's a little bit gimpy when he gets up. They'll hand the ball to Rogel. Rogel goes right up the middle, bulldozing again. Alex Rogel picks up a big six-yard gain. Yeah, he met Mr. Robinson right there, and I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a collision. Second five from the 15, 8.23 to go. Kenton on the drive again. Here comes Alex Rogel again with another five-yard gain. Alex Rogel right now is doing everything he can for the Kenton offense. Rubio, Robinson. And Darren, maybe you're right. Maybe the Kenton coaching staff realizes that Johnson's not the healthiest right now, so they're leaning on Rogel, and they're getting the job done. Oh, they're getting the job done, and they're winning the battle in the trenches when they're running the football. Johnson finds his man outside. He's going to take it. Let's see if they're going to say touchdown. Touchdown to Grady Clayman Beasley. Corbin Johnson fires the ball across the left side, and the Wildcats take the lead 12-8. to eight. Yeah, that first move with his feet, the little shaking peak right there.
got away from Rodenberger and turned into a foot race, and he got to the corner our, pylon. Our second quarter sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Defiance again is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Remember FDIC, equal housing. So here come the Wildcats as they'll go for a two-point conversion, 758. Johnson's going to throw off to the left side. He's got a man out there, and it's no good. And he had it going across the line. Beasley, I thought he had it there, and he dropped it as he came down. Yep, the official's right on top of it. It appeared to hit the ground as he brought the football down and lost security of it. With 7.58 to go in the second quarter, Kenton Wildcats take the lead 12 to 8. You're watching high school football on WLSN. Welcome back to Robinson Field here at Kenton High School. It's Kenton Wildcats lead 12 to 8 with 7.58 to go. And there you see Kenton quarterback Corbin Johnson being tended to again. You're right, Darren. Something's obviously wrong with the young man, and he's trying to play with an obvious injury. Yeah, with, with playing through the pain and trying to, to play through it. Thank gosh we have trainers, right? Absolutely. Because he's right down there doing the best that he can to get him back in. Absolutely. So Kenton will kick off as kick will be made by number 12, Grady Clayman Beasley. And just a squib kick to the right side. That's going to give Defiance great field position. And there you see the flag come up. So 7.58 to go. Kenton 12 to 8. Kenton comes in, Darren, averaging 27.6 a game. Defensively, they give up 33.2 a game. But right now, that defensive line for Kenton is really the story of the game. Playing well, yeah. And, and, and honestly, both defensive and offensive lines for the Wildcats is dominating this game. Well, it, it's almost like a bend, don't break right. by both ball clubs. But when it comes time to put either team in third and long situations, both ball clubs are getting it done right now. Head coach Travis Cooper for the Defiance Bulldogs brings his squad in at 4-1, 3-1 on the WBL. Coach Cooper has an overall record of 83-56. and 56. And They played Napoleon, beat them 38-13. Wapakoneta, they, a huge win for this program, second week of the season, which stunned a lot of the line of land folks. And then they played St. Mary's, and then a thriller where they lose to Van Wert 43-42, come back last week with a big win over Shawnee. Pretty topsy-turvy, isn't it? It really is. the bottom of the WBL this year. It really is. Such parity in this league. So here comes Ziffel, and he's in the gun. 7.58 to go, first and 10 from the 38. There goes right in motion. Ziffel looks across, a little delay handoff, and Kenton's not seeing any of that as there's a game back to the line of scrimmage. But Seth Leffler on the stop. Seth Leffler with a great job. Sure was. You saw Anthony Wilder go in motion there, and I thought they were going to throw the ball, but it was just a little delayed handoff. You didn't fool number 58 on that one, <laughs> no, that's for not sure. not at all. He's a fine defensive player for the Wildcats. That'll bring him second and 10 from the 38 with 7.27 to go. Ziffel in the gun. He's got three to the left, one to the right. Ziffel's going to roll off to his left. He's got a man out there as he's got a nice strike to Wilder, and he takes it up to midfield and a big-time gain for the Defiance Bulldogs. Trent DeLong on the stop, Quinn Refner. Anthony, Anthony Wilder comes in as the leading pass catcher for the Bulldogs. 21 catches, 286 yards, and six touchdowns. So they go to him a lot. It's, it's interesting, Darren, they'll line him up in the backfield also. Yeah, they're lining him up in the backfield. Anytime normally you see teams put somebody in motion, they want to see if teams are setting them up for the man or the zone defensively. First and 10 from the 50-yard line. They're going to go to Wilder to the left side. There's a... Yeah, that one's going to come that back, gonna, Yeah, <laughs> you're exactly right. As the flag comes in, and the entire booth up here, you hear everybody go, ooh, everybody saw it. That'll be a hold on the Defiance Bulldogs. Yeah, he was trying to hook block right there and got caught using the hands. You now, Ken's defense for, for many, many years has been predicated about the middle linebacker making the stops. Now, everybody else has a role in the system, but typically their, their leading tackler excuse me, year in and year out, has been their middle linebacker. I think it's first and 10. Excuse me, no, no. It was 6.37 to go. Yeah, that's that'll a go big first one. First and there. 20. That'll go first yeah, that's and a 20. Big one. Yeah, from the 40, that'll back him up. So here's Zippel in the gun. He's got trips to his left. He's got a single set back off to his left. He surveys the defense. He's under heavy pressure. 
he's just going to throw it. Oh, he thought I thought he was going to throw it away, but he finds a man, and they're going to say incomplete. The intended target was number two for the Bulldogs. That is Brady Borton. Bush on on the coverage over here on this near boundary. Got to bring up second and 20 from the 40. An absolutely gorgeous night here in Kenton tonight. Temperatures in the low or the high 60s. Not much wind. This is Zippel looking across. He's going to throw to the left side and just outside of number 11, Anthony Wilder. And right now, the Defiance offense is struggling just a tad bit. Yeah, they appear to be just a little bit stagnant, don't you? That's a ball right there that Zippel wishes he had back because he just he airmailed that one. Didn't give his offensive player a chance to secure it. Got to bring up third and 20 from the 40-yard line. Kenton leads 12 to 8. Zippel in the gun. Takes the handoff. They're going to do a double reverse. They're going to go back to Zippel. And Zippel's got him, his man on the left side. He was wide open as they find Abel Rubio. A nice play as they did a double reverse. Go back to Zippel. Zippel finds Rubel, or Rubio, excuse me, a big pickup of about 30 yards. Ty Coombs on the stop for the red and white. Tonight's instant replay is brought to you by Home Savings Alona of Kenton, excuse me, committed to serving our community since 1888. So here comes the double reverse. Back to the quarterback. Impressive. Yeah, very impressive. Zippo in the gun. He's got three to the right. He'll throw to the right. The wide receiver screen. He gets away from the first man as that target was went to number three, T.J. Kellermeyer. And they had him stop, Darren, in behind the line of scrimmage. And Kellermeyer just does a great job of sure getting did. the yards. Yeah, Kenton didn't, you know, that's one of the concerns Coach Turner had was being able to tackle in the open space. And that one right there was a breakaway. That was a missed tackle. Unfortunately, didn't get the wrap up. Coombs come in to mop up the play That'll for the Wildcats. Second and six from the 35 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard with 5.30 to go. Zippel in the gun. He's got Rubio to the right. He's got two to the left and one to the right. He's going to keep himself follow the block of Rubio as he goes to the 30, and he's taken down at about the 28-yard line. So Zippel keeps it himself there for a gain of about six yards. Yeah, Rubio with a nice block there to get got a hold on the field, apparently. Danny. Another flag comes down. Let's see what this one is. They're going to say a hold against the Defiance Bulldogs. So one step forward, two steps back for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's 30 yards, what, 20 yards in penalties? 20 yards in penalties. I keep just thinking 15, yeah. but it's 10 each. Yeah, just this drive, 20 yards in penalties. So that'll take it back to the 45 yard line. That'll bring up second and 16. Penalty moves the ball back to the 45 yard line, second and 16. And as we mentioned earlier, Brez Zipfel has 142 rushing yards. He's not afraid to keep it himself. He's going to hand the ball off to Rubel. He goes across the left side. And that'll be a gain of maybe a yard there. Yeah, bottled up in there, first hit by Coons. Trent along off the bottom of that pile. Leffler. Seth Leffler. Clock continues to run. A very low scoring game for two high powered offenses, Darren, as we're at 12 to 8 and we're almost to halftime. Well, things can change after halftime, you know. <laughs> You're right. I think we're going to see a lot more points on the board. So here come the Bulldogs, third and 15 from the 44. Zippel in the gun. He's got. Rubio off to his right. Zippel looks across the landscape. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to roll to his right. And he's going to throw deep for the end zone. And he's got his man out there. And it looks like it's a no. They're going to say he was out of bounds. The intended target was number two, Brady Borton. He catches the ball. And they're going to say he was out of bounds. That was close, Darren, really close. Well, I wasn't watching that. I was watching the, sh the shot that Zippel took right there by Took a hard one. Oh, <laughs> boy. And I was watching the receiver. You were watching the quarterback. Yeah. Clayman Beasley laid the wood to Ziffel right there. That'll bring up fourth and 15 from the 44-yard line. And Ziffel's going to go back in punt formation. Back deep for the Wildcats, Colby Howard, the 5'9 senior. Ziffel takes the snap, and he gets it up in the air, and... 
Colby Howard's going to call for a fair kick. It's going to go into the end zone. So with 4-11 to go, the Wildcats have a chance to go up two scores here, Gilly. And uh, I don't think anybody expected to see one team run away from this, but two touchdowns in this game could be huge. Yeah, you know, looking back at first turnover by Defiance, sort of took the air out of sails, but they did a good job getting back into the game. You know, it's only a one possession game for them. But like you said, Kenton can extend this to two. They can score at any time at any place on that field. So Corbin Johnson will come back out and direct the Wildcat offense. So we've seen him go to the trainer table a couple times tonight. He's got trips to his left. He's got a single set back to his right. He's going to throw back to his left. And the ball is picked off. It is picked off. And oh, no, no, they're going to say it hit the ground. It looked to me, it hit the receiver. The intended target was number 12, Clayman Beasley. The ball goes up in the air, and they're going to say it hit the ground. Matt Cummins was right on top of it. Yes, he was. He said the ball, you know, hit the turf. A great, and he was very, he, very adamant yeah, about yeah, it. Very wasn't. adamant about it. So that makes me believe he made the right call. So here comes Johnson. He'll throw off to the left. He's got Collins off to his left, and he's going to be taken down about the 25-yard line, a gain of about five. Good job by Defiance stringing that out there, taking that away in the flat. Though it was completed, they didn't get much out of it. That'll make it third and six from the 24-yard line. Here's the scary part. Kent, does Kenton shoot somebody down the seam? Let's, yeah, let's take a look here. 24-yard line, 334 to go. Johnson's in the gun. He's got trips to his right. He's under heavy pressure, and he's going to go down. And a big-time sack by number 68 for the Bulldogs, Ray Salinas. Comes out of nowhere, Gilly. I don't think he was touched. Yeah, the big fella did a good job using that swim technique to get through that offensive line of Kenton. And let's credit Defiance with some really good defense there, Darren, because they, you know, with four minutes to go, you're assuming that Kenton can drive down the field, but a great job by the Bulldog defense. Sure was. Back deep for Defiance is number 11, Anthony Wilder, as Kenton will punt from the five-yard line. Oh, Kenton appears to be short-handed. They are short -handed. They're going to have to take a penalty here. No, Kenton's going to take a timeout. Kenton will take a timeout to avoid the uh, the penalty with 2.44 to go. That would have backed him in the end zone, Dan. That would not be good for him. Well, the fortunate part for Kenton, you know, is Defiance is getting the football. It's not like Kenton has it on the offensive side of the ball. But if they do get it back, you know, could that come back to haunt him that timeout? Well, and Defiance is going to get the ball in really good field position as number 11, Anthony Wilder, is standing on the 50-yard line. Uh, so if it's, if it's kicked in front of him or to him, it's going to be, you know, I, I, we haven't seen any indication from Kenton that they're going to be, it's going to be a big punt as, uh, you know. Well, I'm curious, they're going to come after him. That's a great point. That's a great point. And they've got, uh, they've got him up on the line. Let's see what they do here. 2.44 to go, high snap. He gets the punt off, and it looked like it was touched. I think that was touched by was a touch. I believe a Defiance lineman touched the ball. So that goes out of bounds, and it gives Defiance excellent field position with 2.44 to go. Yeah, that's an excellent play there by that special teams of Defiance. Great field position, like you said, 42 yards or 41 yards to punch that thing in. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 41-yard line. Kenton leads 12 to 8. Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert from Robinson Field here at Kenton High School. Key WBL matchup. So here's Zippo in the gun. He's got Rubio off to his left. He's got two receivers to the left, one in the slot. He's got a man in motion. Zippel takes the snap. He's going to hand to Rubio. And oh, Rubio, nice oh play. my goodness, Rubio. I tell you, he's having a heck of a game. Absolutely Clayman destroyed. Beasley is absolutely having a whale of a game at both, <laughs> end, both sides of the ball. I want to say both ends of the court. <laughs> right. but both, sides, or both sides of the it's ball. Like, it's like basketball out there. You're right. What a great stance there by the Kenton defensive line. That'll bring up second and 12 from the 43-yard line. 2.20 to go. Clock continues to run. And now we've got a stoppage of play here. Let's see what the officials are saying. Saying an official timeout. 
And they're bringing one of them. They're saying it was Beasley. Yeah, Beasley had to come out. Claiming yeah. Beasley yeah. they okay. brought out. Okay. So here's Zippo in the gun. He's got one receiver off to the left. And a quick hike there by the Bulldogs. And Zippo's going to keep it himself as he tries to get around the left side. And he is taken down for maybe a gain of a yard. And so you're seeing the Kent defense really flexing their muscle right now as Defiance is having all kinds of trouble moving the ball down the field. Good job by Trent DeLong coming up from that secondary spot. Dropping Ziffel. 148 to go here until halftime. Third and 10 from the 41 yard line. Ken leads 12 to 8. Ziffel in the gun. He's got Rubio to his right. He takes the snap, looks across the field. He's under pressure. He's going to throw deep down the middle. And he's got a man out there. And no, goes off of the outstretched hands of number two, Brady Borton. And that is the same receiver he had in the right side of the end zone. Guess what? That was a heck of a throw. Yes, it was. <laughs> you want to talk about planting your feet and letting one rip? 45 he yards He almost threw it to the back of the end zone. He sure did. But he threw it to a place that was not going right. to be intercepted. Sure. But there you see the speed of Brady Borton making the most of everything he's done tonight. He just couldn't corral that one in. That brings up fourth and 10 from the 41-yard line. Ziffel goes back in pump formation. I'm just glad that that wide receiver didn't hit the goal post. Oh, he was back there, wasn't he? Yeah, it was that far back. Here's Zippel. And he will pooch punt it again, gets it up high in the air, and it'll be called fair catch at about the 10, yeah, maybe 8, 9-yard line. So that's where the Wildcats will take over with 131 to go. So a defensive effort right now during the first half. I didn't think we'd see it. Well, I'll tell you, credit to both coaching staffs. They've watched the film, and they've prepared the kids for what teams do best. And both these teams right now are struggling to generate offense. And if they do generate it, it's the, the, the yellow flag that's, that's costing them. Here's Corbin Johnson in the gun with 131 to go. He's got trips to the left. He's going to hand off to the first man up front. That's number 18, Alex Rogel, as he continues to carry the ball. And that clock continues to run. Kenton leads 12 to 8. Appeared to be Robinson on the stop with Rubio. And right now, the difference in the game is Alex Rogel's ability to run the football. He has done a nice job tonight for the Wildcats. Playcock down to 15. Under a minute on the game clock. Kenton continues to lead 12 to 8. I think a lot of people are going to be shocked when they see this score at halftime, Darren, around the Lima Land area. And there's a nice job, number 68 for the dogs, Mr. Ray Salinas. Salinas. He's, he's had a nice ball yeah, game. He sure has. So a timeout on the field taken by Defiance with 39 seconds to go. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton online at KentonMoose428.com. So that brings up third and eight from the 11-yard line. Darren, is Kenton a little cautious here because they are backed up so far and maybe, you know, maybe Johnson's not 100% healthy? I think that plays a huge part in it. If he's not healthy from the upper body, even the hip area, yeah. he's not going to be able to sling it like he can. And we've seen him how many times be over yes. here on the sideline and be stretched. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're doing when they bring him over to the sideline and stretching that back out. Well, I'm curious, you know, what are they going to do with him at halftime because once he sits down, it's yeah. going to be hard for him to to get loosened up. Yeah, absolutely. So that'll put with 43 seconds to go. That'll bring up third and eight from the 11-yard line. Kenton's got trips off to the left. They've got one receiver to the right. They've got a single set back off to Johnson's right. And he goes in motion, and, and the snap oh, is that's on the ground, and it's in the end zone, and it's picked up by Defiance, and Defiance has scored a touchdown. He, you know, and that's that's one of those things you could see he was laboring to go after that football. You're absolutely correct. You could correct. tell that his back is not right. And he was real hesitant about getting on the ground, and Salinas went over the top of him. And Big that, play by the Bulldogs. That's the first mistake from the Kenton offense. Each team has one turnover, and it couldn't have came at a costlier time as the Bulldogs take a 14-12 lead. Yeah, when you got a quarterback that's not at 100%, you throw it over his 
to an area that he can't get his hands on it. That's a great it's call. It's tough. It's a great call, Gilly. So here comes Defiance as they'll go for two. They got a man in motion. Zipple's in the gun. He takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself. They'll flip it back. And he's going to try to take it into the end zone. Wow, and he hit. gets in. Number 11, Anthony Wilder, with a nice play call. And he makes it 16 to 12 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. I'll tell you, he took a shot right below the knees there and got airborne. Just extended that football enough over the plane to get the two. So, with 38 seconds to go, the Defiance Bulldogs take a 16 to 12 lead. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Back here at Kenton High School, the Defiance Bulldogs on a defensive touchdown, an opportunistic job by the defensive line. The snap was just low, and you're absolutely right. Johnson labored to pick it up. Wasn't low. I, I, okay, well, it was not directly at him. It was in a position where he had to yeah. make a quick decision with his back and just couldn't secure it. There's Defiance. They'll kick the ball off to Ken. A little squib kick picked up at the 20-yard line by Collins. As he tries to go to the right side and tries to shake a tackler loose. And he goes up to the 35-yard line. So he'll give the Wildcats decent field position. And one thing, you know, Danny, even though he may be dinged up, I don't want to take anything away from Defiance. Oh, no, no, absolutely right not. There. Absolutely not. Because Salinas went after it like he's supposed to, and he jarred that thing away. He may have not got it, but yeah. he helped his teammates. And in Corbin Johnson's defense, we don't know how hurt he is. We're just watching the trainers work on well, him as he when, comes across you know, the line. When yeah. he's starting to labor on the yes. field, that's not a good sign. Right. So 34 seconds to go here. And credit to that young man for, for staying out there because I've had back injuries. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure you have. Absolutely. And it's painful. So Johnson's just going to take a knee. And the snap was a little high there. He had to grab that one. So some center quarterback exchange problems here late in the half. See if that'll be, and that will do it with 20 seconds to go. That'll be the last play of the first half. So after one half a play from Kenton High School, the Defiance Bulldogs lead 16 to 12, a defensive struggle, Gilly, and uh, hopefully we'll see some fireworks after the half. Well, there's going to be some adjustments made on both sides of the ball, but if you're a defensive coordinator, you've got to be pleased with how your team or teams have performed on the defensive side of the ball. So that'll do it for one half of play. High school, excuse me, for Kenton High School and Defiance Bulldogs lead 16 to 12. We'll have second half action when we return right here at WSN. Welcome back here to Kenton High School. We're at halftime. Defiance Bulldogs lead the Kenton Wildcats 16 to 12. Well, Gilly, you take a look at the first half action. A defensive struggle. We had a defensive touchdown. Both teams had a turnover. And, and Kenton, un, untraditionally, was running the football quite a bit. And they were successful with it. And, you know, they're going to have to lean on their, in my opinion, they're going to have to lean more on their running game this half because, you know, you got a quarterback that's dinged up. Not only is that going to affect his ability to throw the football, it's going to affect his ability to run also. And, and Defiance, an offense that comes in averaging over 30 points a game, really struggled in the first half. They got a huge break with about 40 seconds to go as an errant snap goes in the end zone. Defensive lineman falls on it, and they get six points and convert to two-point yeah, conversion. Yeah, that, you know, that was a very unfortunate situation there for the Wildcats. It happened at a bad time and a bad place on the football field. But uh, Defiance made the plays when they needed to. But, you know, give Kenton credit defensively, like you said, for, you know, Defiance coming in at 34 points a game and for Kenton to hold them, you know, to the 16 sure. points. And actually it was less than that. It was eight points. You know, kudos to them. Let's see what both teams bring to the table with this second half. So Kenton will kick off. Defiance gets the ball here first in the second half. And another small squib kick down the right side. Picked up by Kellemeyer as he goes to about the 35-yard line, and that's where the dogs will take over. Yeah, I got a feeling the coach is going to have a talk with him about that, about running. Yeah, I think you're north right. South <laughs> instead of east and west, because he caught the thing and what at about the 38, ended <laughs> yeah. up at the 35. <laughs> Took a little loss there. Yeah, I think the next time he's going to be told just to knee it right there. Well, we've seen some vicious hitting out there on Whoa. both sides, and uh, we've talked about the injuries that. Uh, Seem to be affecting everybody this time of year. Week six of the high school season, you're seeing some guys banged up a little bit on both sides. Yeah, and you're also seeing the kids' toughness to be out there. Absolutely. 
you know, to take those lickings, licks and Timex watch and keep on ticking. <laughs> Here's Zippo in the gun. He's got two backs off to the right and to the left. He's got two receivers, one on the left, one on the right. They're going to hand to Rubio up front. He'll go off the right side, and he's going to get a big gain. And I thought maybe a horse collar tackle, but they didn't call it as he grabbed him up high. Yeah, it was close, wasn't it? Right it sure up was. around above the shoulder pads. Abel Rubio gets an eight-yard gain. Excuse me, nine yards, second and one from the 44-yard line. Danny Holberg, Darren Gilbert from Robinson Field here at Kenton High School. A key WBL matchup. Defiance 4-1 and one overall, 3-1 and one in the WBL. Still tied for first with several teams in the WBL. Look, that WBL is wide open right now, Darren. It really is. Oh, absolutely. You know, you've got, you, you know, Defiance, I hate saying it, but this is an important game along with the rest of them to stay one game back. Absolutely. There's Rubio, tries to get up amongst the tall boys in the front line, and he is just thrown to the ground for a loss of about two yards. That'll bring up third and about three. Jaden Mustang, the freshman on the stop. He like Cobble near the line. Got no some help from Cobble. Coons. Good job gang tackling here. We've called some several freshmen and sophomore tonight for the Wildcats. So here's Zippel in the gun. He's got Rubio to his right. He's got two receivers to the left, to the right. Third and one from the 44-yard line. Zippel's going to throw to the right. Quick toss out there, and he's got his man out there for another root lumber first down. Good job by the outside right there. I'm not sure who threw the block to springing, but he did a good job blocking that defensive back, allowing him to squeeze through to pick up that first down for the Bulldogs. Our third quarter sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Defiance Kent is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So that'll bring up first and 10 from the 49-yard line. Dogs lead 16 to 12 with 10.05 to go here in the third quarter. Zippel's going to hand the ball off to the left side and a counter play that takes about 16 to 17 yards. Number 11, Anthony Wilder with a big gain for the Bulldogs. Yeah, dragging red and white uniform players along the way. Quinn Refner securing the tackle, but not after he ran off a ton of yards and another Bulldog first down. There you've seen Abel Rubio and Anthony Wilder really tag teaming the running department here for the Bulldogs as they're in the backfield with Zipfel. And one to the left, one to the right, and they'll go fake the handoff. Zippel's going to go up top. He's got a man wide open and touchdown defiance. A perfect strike to number two, Brady Borton, and there's Borton. That's the third strike they've sent to him, the first catch for a touchdown. Well, you know, my concern was, you know, giving up the seam route. You know, defiance setting them up, getting the bat, or getting the, there I go again, getting the <laughs> football out into the flats. They got the safety biting right there, partner, and Defiance hit the home run. So Defiance will go for two. Our instant replay to sponsor tonight is the Home Savings Alone of Kenton, committed to serving our community since 1888, offering infinite opportunities and services you can count on. Home Savings Alone, member FDIC, equal housing lender. So here's Zippel in the gun. He's got a man in motion. Zippel's going to roll to his right. He's going to throw back to his left, and he's got a man wide open for a two-point conversion as he strikes that ball to number five, Garrett Rodenberger. And the Defiance Bulldogs take a 24-12 lead. 9.33 to go here in the third quarter. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Kenton High School, 9.33 to go. The Bulldogs take a 24-12 lead over the Kenton Wildcats. And Darren, this, this is what I was talking about at halftime. The, the Defiance Bulldogs score with 30 seconds to go until halftime, get the ball first, take it right down the field. That's yeah, a momentum shifter. Yeah. That turnover was huge. Three big plays, three big hits for Defiance has resulted in touchdowns. Two on the long ball, and then also that uh, fumble recovery in the end zone. So there's another squib kick. Picked up by the Wildcats at about the 20-yard line, brought up to the 25-yard line, and Bushong will be taken down. Blaine Bushong taken down at the 25-yard line. That's where the Wildcats will take over offensively, down 24 to 12 with 9.28 to go. Danny Holberg, Darren Gilbert, lots of big games tonight in the area, Darren. Marion Local and Versailles, two number one squads in the same conference going at it. We've got key WBL action, NWC action. We're at every, we're, we're everywhere. Yeah, big, big weekend for. If you're a sports lover, it's a huge weekend for sports. <laughs> Ohio State, Notre Dame, the NFL, we've got it all here. 
So here comes Corbin Johnson as he's going to take the snap. He'll hand the ball off. And not much of a gain there. Alex Rogel, the ball carrier. Alex Rogel, the ball carrier. Stockman on the stop. Met near the line by Joey Robinson. Oh, there's Joey Robinson again on the stop. Not going to get him a solo. He's going to get him an assist that time. Up second and ten. And there's a flag. I believe you're going to see another false start. That is the fourth, fourth, excuse me, fourth false start for the Wildcats tonight. And look, I say I say fourth false start, but Darren, that's typically what you get when you're getting no huddle team. So it's it's not uncommon to have those kind of problems. Yeah, that's it's important to get all eleven on the same page. But like you said, when you go no huddle. Bring up second and 15 for the 20. Johnson takes the snap, looks across the field, throws it into the middle, and a nice diving catch across the original line of scrimmage to number 12 to Beasley. That was a heck of a catch. Well, you know, and the throw was really good, too, because he threw it far enough ahead that that defender wasn't going to get his hands on it. But, yeah, it's a nice pitch and catch. Good for a gain of seven yards, third and eight. That's one of those where both of them deserve a lot of credit for execution. Grady claiming Beasley a nice game tonight. Third and eight from the 27, 8.20 to go. Johnston in the gun. He's got trips off to his right. He's under pressure. He throws to the right. He's just going to throw it out in the flat. That right there, it looks like he couldn't get much on that pass. That was a long pass, Darren, across the field. Well, that and the pressure. Robinson coming in hard along with Mr. Salinas bearing down on you. He has to get rid of the football, and there's just not enough timing. And there you see Johnson coming off the field, walking very gingerly. We talked to some folks at halftime and told us he was having some issues with his hip. And there you see him struggling to come off the field. Well, you know exactly what happens with the hip period. It affects the nerve endings. Absolutely. It is a tough injury to deal with. It's pain that's going to last until it goes away. And it's not one of those. It's an overnighter. So there's the punt. Picked up by the Bulldogs at the 35-yard line. Tries to go to the far sideline, taking down about the 38-yard line. Number 11, Anthony Wilder with the returns, with 8.09 to go. Good job there by the red and white. Doing an absolute great job there. A huge, huge crowd on tap tonight here for the home squad. Along with the homecoming festivities, they also had uh, junior high band nine who joined the high school band, which is a really nice thing to see. And lots of grandmas and grandpas and moms and dad in the crowd wearing red and white. Nothing like, nothing like Darren small town football. Oh, it's great. It's the best. Stable high. It really it's is. It's the best. Yep. It brings people together. It's a great community event, and uh, they do a good job here in Kenton. And they've got all <laughs> these stands are full on this home side. Well, you know, just sports in general, Northwest absolutely. Ohio. I, you know, maybe I'm biased, but I think no, it's no, the absolutely. best in the state of Ohio. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Especially small school. Here's Ziffel in the gun. He's got Wilder in motion, and they throw to Wilder to the left side. He's at the 40, and he's going to be taken down right about the 39-yard line. He got across the 40, but he was taken back by a host of Wildcats, and he was hit hard by number eight, Tim Wilkinson. We've talked about Wilkinson tonight. He's a nice player. He is a nice player. Run down right there by Quinn Refner. Also, Trent DeLong. I bring up. Second and nine from the 39-yard line. Clock continues to run, 7.38 to go. Yeah, that's a much better pitch and catch right there. He overthrew one, if you recall, in the first half. Abel Rubio off to the right of Ziffel. They'll hand the ball to Rubio off the left side. He's got blockers out there. There goes Rubio down the left side across the 50, and he'll be taken down to the 45-yard line. That'll be another root lumber first down. Tackled by Kate Smith. And they've got a Wildcat down and in obvious pain, number 24. That is Trent DeLong, the 5'9 junior, is holding his leg up in the air, and he is in a lot of pain. We're going to let them tend to him on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Football on WSN. Back here at Kenton High School, Trenton DeLong, number 24, was the injured player, and they are taking him off the field. He's putting a little bit of weight on that ankle, but uh, obviously in a lot of pain. And, Gilly, you know him. You said he's a tough kid. Oh, he's a tough kid, yeah. He's, he's one of those that wants to be out there, and for him to be down on the ground like that. You know he's in some pain. You know man. he's in some pain. 
So that'll bring up first and 10 from the 45-yard line. Ziffel in the gun. He's got trips to the right. He's going to look across the field. He's under pressure. He steps up the pocket. He's going to throw long. He's going to keep it himself. He goes across the 40, and he's going to be taken out of bounds, and a big-time hit out of bounds, and no flag. And there's a skirmish between the linemen in the middle of the field. And now the official is trying to get hold of the whole situation here. Not real sure what happened. I was watching the tackle over here, and there was a, a scrum broke there out. There was a helmet. Yeah, yeah, I saw a helmet on the field. So I was watching the, the contact so over here along the sideline. Right, line. right. But the officials, you know, they, they're the ones getting paid, and they're right down there in the action. Absolutely. But that was claiming Beasley, you know. He that's the hard. second time he laid the wood to Ziffle. <laughs> he hits hard, I'm telling you, that young man. So, they're going to say second and 10 from the 38-yard line. 7.05 to go. Ziffle in the gun. He's got Rubio off to his left. He's got two receivers to the left. They're going to hand the ball to Rubio up the middle. And he goes straight up the middle for a big gain in another root lumber first down. He'll be taken down at about the 23-yard line. Yeah, that's the big three for defiance up on the interior front line. Steve Hoffman along with left guard Romeo Valley, right guard Jazz and Phillips to open up a huge hole right there. That'll bring up 6.54 to go as the clock continues to run. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. Defiance leads 24 to 12. And a lot of credit to Defiance because Leffler didn't appear to be on the field this last play. Zippel's going to do a little shuffle pass back to Anthony Wilder to the right side as he goes down the right side and taken out of bounds with a big gain, another root lumber first down. So how you see both teams running the ball quite effectively tonight, and we didn't expect to see a lot of that with both of these high-powered offenses. I thought the quarterbacks would come out throwing, which they have, but a lot more running than I thought we'd see. Well, Defiance has, has done a really good job mixing in they, that you're pass absolutely and right. that run and keeping the Wildcats all, you know, defense on the field and also keeping them being honest. First and, and 10. Milking some time off the clock. That's a great point. Yeah, first and 10 from the 11-yard line, so they can get a first down. Zippel's in the gun. He's got two backs, one to the left, one to the right. He's got a man in motion. Zippel takes the snap. He's going to hand the ball to Wilder. Wilder goes off the right side, zigzagging through the middle, and he gets towards the goal line. He's going to go down to about the two-yard line. And you're right, Rodenberger goes in motion, the tight end, and using him as an extra blocker to open that seam up, and that's exactly what happened. You know, Rodenberger's a Kenton name. I don't know if a lot of folks realize that or not, but, yeah, it's, it's a Kenton name. And there's a flag on the play, and it looks like, are they, is this an ejection? They're walking the young man across the field, number five, Kyle Thrush, and the official walked him over to the bench and spoke to the coaching staff. I'm not real sure what happened here. The, but there's been no personal foul. They're saying personal foul. Chris Ewald has ejected him. He's ejected him from the game. Yeah, that's a, that's a big hit for the Wildcats, especially defensively. You know, that's one of the kids they lean on for leadership. And, he has some experience, so that's a big hit they're taking right there. Then you got Combs also, or excuse me, DeLong that was dinged up. That's two returning lettermen that you're losing on the defensive side of the ball. So Kyle Thrush, number five, the 5'8 five senior, 185 pound running back linebacker, has been ejected from the game for we don't really know what it was a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, but we're not real sure what happened. I did not see an interaction be between him and another player. No, it's it's on the far side away from us. That'll bring up first and goal from the set from the two yard line. Six twenty one to go. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Rubio off to the left. He's going to hand to Rubio. Rubio goes up the middle, and he gets close, and that's a touchdown. Another defiance touchdown with 6-11 to go. They take a 30-12 to lead here at Kenton High School. So the defiance Bulldogs continue to run the football effectively down the field, mixing up passing and running, and they take a 30-12 to lead as they go for two. 
Yeah, they're making the clock their friend, and that, that's exactly what they did that series, and they got a six-point conversion for it. Let's see what happens here. Ziffel takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself. He looks to throw, and he's going to throw back in the end zone, and he overshoots his intended target, and that score will remain 30 -12. So with 6-11 to go here in the third quarter, the Defiance Bulldogs lead the Kent Wildcats 30-12. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Kent High School with 6-11 to go. The Lions Bulldogs have scored two times here in the second half. And we've seen <laughs> just a bizarre bunch of plays, Darren, and uh, lots of running plays uh, mixed in with the pass. We saw an injection, several penalties. It got physical. Yeah. And then it turned to chippy, and yeah. then, you know, you got to keep your head. You know, it's a very physical game, but unfortunately, now you're you're Kenton lost one of their best players. Yeah. I think according to the rules, it's a two game That's suspension. Yes, yeah, so it'll be a two game suspension. Yeah. So there's another squib kick down to the 20 yard line, picked up by the Wildcats. They'll bring it to the 30. And that's where they'll bring it to about the 32 yard line. That's where Kenton will take over. And it looks like, Darren, that number four, Blaine Bushong, will be coming in to play quarterback for the Wildcats as Johnson is still on the trainer's table in, in some obvious pain. Yeah, and that could be a lingering thing. You know, it's it's one of those that he may just have to relax and continue to get treatment and stay off his feet, which is going to, you know, affect his practice time. And the timing aspect is not going to affect him knowing what to do, but timing it up with his receivers. Bring up first and 10, 6.08 to go. Defiance leads 30 to 12. Dan Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Kenton High School. Bushong throws off to the left. He's got his man out there for a completed pass, and he's gone down the sidelines. He's at the 40. He's at the 30, to the 25, to the 20. And he takes oh, it in for a running. touchdown. Bushong's pass to Carson DeLong takes it 75 yards for the touchdown. He gets the credit for the touchdown. <laughs> One, he got the football thrown from the – Sophomore, an excellent pitch and catch, but two great blocks. Absolutely. That is exactly what the Kenton Wildcat offense needed as they closed the gap to 30 to 18 with 5.56 to go. Yeah, I think Defiance thought they were going to catch him, and man, he put it in fourth <laughs> gear. He was gone. And you're right, some fantastic blocking down the right side as the Kenton Wildcats will go for two here to try to cut the lead to 10. So Bushong's in the gun. He's got a single set back to his right. He's got trips to the right. Bushong looks her off to the left. He throws it out, and he overshoots his intended target. Off to the left, he was intended for number one, Preston Collins. So with 5.56 to go in the third quarter, the Cannon Wildcats score on a very quick play, and they make it 30-18. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Back here at Kenton High School, and uh, Gilly, there you saw the quick strike offense of the Kenton Wildcats. We've been waiting for it all night. Boy, what a big play for the Wildcats. Oh, it, you know what? They needed that. You know, Defiance had Kenton on their heels and had control of the game and bringing in another quarterback because of an injury. Right. And you know, I mean, just pure execution by the Wildcats. And we've seen... In the scores, they, they're capable of putting points up, especially in the second half. This one will be field of the 20. He'll bring it across to the, almost to the 40 yard line and a great return by the defiance of the Bulldogs. My goodness, I thought he was taken down at about the 30 yard line. He gets clear across the 42 yard well, it line. It looked like rugby, man. There was it like is. 10 or 12 guys <laughs> on, the, on the field right there. That's a great analogy. We haven't what had happened a, a to the run. term piling on? <laughs> We have had a rugby analogy, Darren. That's great. That'll bring first and ten from the 42-yard line. Holy smokes. <laughs> they announced earlier tonight, Darren, that uh, WSN will be rebroadcasting this game, and one of the fans from Kenton said, that's the best show on TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so we got our fans here at Kent Did he High mean School. that or did he mean the high standard? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. There's Wilder. Gets the handoff. Goes across the line. Boy, he was hit hard. Boy, somebody, Boy. Yeah, somebody put a thump into him trying to see who that is. My goodness. That looks like number eight, Tim Wilkinson. Tim Wilkinson's played a heck of a game tonight, Gilly. Yeah, Tim started out as a running back, and they moved him because of his athleticism to the defensive side of the ball. And you see, see right there that senior come up with some speed. <laughs> Drop that shoulder. That'll bring up second and seven from the 45-yard line. Ziffel in the gun. Under heavy pressure, he's going to roll to his right. He's going to keep it himself. Gets away from a defender and goes out of bounds. He picks up another root lumber first down. There you saw the athleticism of Brez Zippel as he makes a nice play to get a first down for the Bulldogs. And again, you're looking at something else. I'm looking in the backfield, and there's like seven linemen on the <laughs> laying on the 40-yard line. I mean, it's getting physical. It is getting very physical. Look, the WBL is not a weak league. These kids are big and strong, and everybody's got good weight programs, and uh, they play hard. Yeah. And if the officials are going to let you play. Absolutely. They bring up first and 10 from the 47-yard line. There goes Wilder in motion. Zippel takes the snap. He's going to hand off to Rubio. Rubio goes across the line of scrimmage for a gain of about three yards. And that is Bill Wilkinson with the tackle. Bill Wilkinson for the Cats with the tackle. Abel Rubio has been the bell cow tonight for the Defiance Bulldogs as he has carried the ball quite a bit. Bring him second and seven from the 44 with 4.40 to go here in the third quarter. First quarter kind of, or first half flew by. This one's kind of been a little slower paced here, but uh, we've had some injuries and um, a lot of runs. Here's Zippo in the gun. He's under pressure. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to pick up about nine yards, almost a, well, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds at about the 40-yard line for a gain of about six yards. You know, he's taking two lickings from that young man, and I'll tell you what, he made the right decision yes, right there absolutely. getting out of bounds. Another yard, and he was going to take another pop. They bring up third and two from the 40. Call it a gain of four, third and three. And that's smart football on that young man's part. Third and three from the 40, 421 to go. They've got trips to the left side, single receiver to the right. Zippel's going to keep it himself as he follows his lead back, and he's got a big gain and another root lumber first down. Yeah, did a heck of a job, didn't he, with that it's little, good. I want to call it a dipsy dude, uh, yeah. but I'm telling you, he got his feet and vision together and did a nice job bouncing it outside. Our first down sponsor is Root Lumber in Kenton. They have everything you need to get the job done, whether you're a contractor or a do-it-yourselfer. Visit us at rootlumber.com. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 34-yard line. Clock continues to run. Defiance leads 30 to 18. Ziffel in the gun. They've got trips to the left. One single receiver off to the right. And the man in motion. Rubio in the backfield off to the right. Ziffel takes the snap. Goes to Rubio. Rubio goes straight up the middle for another big gain of about six yards. Dylan Searson with a stop for the Wildcats. Good call. You know, Ziffel's been a name from Defiance, and I'm just curious if his dad's Hans Ziffel, because <laughs> when I got into coaching, that, that fella could play the game of basketball. He was really athletic. I'm just curious. It's got to be some shirt tail relation. Sure, sure. Second and five from the 29. There's a flag comes out. And we're going to get a false start by the Defiance offense. False start against Defiance. Yep, somebody on the interior line flinched. Mr. Ewald got that one. That five yard penalty makes it second and ten. Second and ten from the 33 yard line. Defiance leads 30 to 18. Danny Homer, Darren Gilbert, Kenton High School on a beautiful fall Friday night. It is fall now, Darren. It's not oh, summer. Summer's over. Well, summer's I'm over. just sitting here thinking, you know, <laughs> we're, we're in week six. We got four weeks left and then playoff, playoff. time. And you and I had some great playoff Whoa. games last year. We, we had a great run, didn't we? we Bring it on. 
Hey, we don't they, care if I mean we went what Tiffin. <laughs> I drove to Sandusky. Me yeah, and Mark. They paired us up in snowstorms. Yeah. We, we had a great time. Oh yeah, I forgot about the <laughs> mini blizzard <at> Tiffin. <laughs> that was the night Van Wert and Cleveland Glenville oh, played. That yeah. was a great Third game. Down, seven yards to go. Yeah, and, you know they Glenville had those players that. <laughs> Three of them's going to be enrolled at Ohio State. One of them's already there. That's right. And Van Wert went toe-to-toe with them and really put themselves in a position where they could win. That'll bring up second and seven from the 31. Zipples in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right, one single receiver to the left. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to roll off to the left. He's looking downfield. He's going to keep it himself. He's got plenty of opportunity and a nice job by Brez Zipple. As he looked to the end zone to throw it, Gilly, the man wasn't open, and he had 10 yards of free grass. He sure did. He looked He looked over his receivers, and they were covered up. Kudos to Kenton for that job right there. But Mr. Ziffel with his legs got just enough for that first down. And a great, great job. You're right, a great job of coverage by the Kenton secondary as they had the receivers locked down. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 22-yard line. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got the receiver off to the left. They're going to hand the ball to Rubio right up the middle, and Rubio just handing out his own form of punishment as he comes close to a first down. Take it down to the 14-yard line. Pickup of eight. That'll bring up Colby Howard on the stop for the Wildcats. Second and one. They're going to say a nine-yard gain. Nine-yard gain on the play. Second down, one to go. Second and one from the 13-yard line. We are now under a minute left in the third quarter. Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Rubio off to the left. That's, excuse me, that's Kellermeyer. Ziffel looks across. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to step up. There's a flag coming in. That's going to be a hold. Ziffel's going to take off, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds, but that one's going to come back because that's going to be a hold on the defiance lineman. Well, we got two flags down now. Two flags on See what they call here. It looks like both, maybe, well, I know the one is on the defiance lineman. Let's see what they call here. I think they're both against defiance. This far side, or near side. I got a holding on defiance. We got, we got an offensive legal use of hands. Well, Kenton brought the house that time as they blitzed everybody off the edge, and Ziffel tries to step up, and there's a clear hold, and now we've got the penalty. Yeah, he did the right thing by stepping up. He doesn't step up, he's going to go down. Yeah, he's going to go down hard, that's right. Yeah, they brought, Kenton brought the house and the linebackers. He's on the play. Illegal block in the back against Defiance is declined. Holding penalty accepted. That'll to bring up second down. Second down, 11 to go. Zipple's in the gun. He's got Rubio off to his right, and he'll go in motion. He looks across the field under heavy pressure. He's going to step up, goes across the 20 to the 15, and he goes to about the 13-yard line, close to a first down. And a great job by Ziffel as the clock continues to run. Now we're under 15 seconds here in the third quarter. Clingman Beasley on the stop for the hometown Wildcats. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter. So after three quarters of play from Robinson Field here at Kenton. The Defiance Bulldogs lead the Kent Wildcats 30 to 18. We come back, we'll have fourth quarter action right here on WOSN. The Defiance Bulldogs lead the Kent Wildcats 30 to 18. Danny Homer, Darren Gilbert. And Defiance trying to put another touchdown on the board here. From the 14-yard line, we'll bring up third and two. Hey, partner, we can't do this without stats. Coach Cooper, Defiance, Travis, got, oh, us, yeah, got, us, that, got us the stuff in a timely manner, as well as Coach Turner. They did a great Thank, job of yep. getting us all this stuff, yep. absolutely. Thank you to both of them. It makes our job a little easier. There's Rubio as he goes up the middle, and he's going to go straight up the gut, and he's going to be taken down at about the two-yard line. And he was headed towards the end zone, Gilly, and a nice job of keeping him out of there by the Wildcats guess who, defense. Guess who's back in playing? For the Wildcats. Trent DeLong. Trent DeLong. Saved a touchdown. The yes, he did. Right 
Somebody must have ran out of their shoe. A little Keith Byers action. <laughs> well, I saw a soccer a shoe come flying over the across the field. I wasn't real sure who that was from, but uh, they're trying to get it back to the owner. Well, it was white. It wasn't yellow. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think it was the running back. I think you're right. First and goal from the one. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is the Home Savings Alone of Kenton, committed to serving our community since 1888. You can count on Home Savings Alone, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And there on the sideline is the Kenton starting quarterback, Corbin Johnson. He has his shoulder pads off, and he is done for the night. So an absolute huge blow for this Kenton offense. Here comes Zipfel. He's going to hand the Rubio. Rubio goes across, and he scores another touchdown. You know, he does such a great job leaning forward with that football in his upper body, and he extended that across the line. Kent did a really good job filling the gap there. He just happened to get that football across the plane. Abel Rubio, the junior tailback, scores again, makes it 36-18 with 11.21 to go. Abel was Abel. Abel was Abel. You're right. He's been, Abel's been able more than once tonight. He's been really good tonight. He's yep. been very good. So now here's Defiance going for two and a little trick play here is they got everybody to the left side. He'll throw to the middle of the end zone. He's got him open. Abel Rubio scores again and a little trickeration by the Bulldogs. Well, we've seen what tonight? We've seen the, the tight end drag, right? We saw yep. the tight end drag. Yep. We also saw what? Triple reverse. That's right. That's right. And then we see this right here. He's got some. Bricks in the bag. We've seen it all. With 11.21 to go, the Defiance Bulldogs lead the Kenton Wildcats 38-18. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Robinson Field here at Kenton High School. We're with 11.21 to go until this game's called it quits. It's 38-18, the Defiance Bulldogs taken another lead here. And Defiance will kick off. There's another squib kick down the middle of the field, picked up by the 20-yard line by Collins. He goes to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, and he'll be taken out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Big run by that senior. So if Ken's going to get back in this one, they're going to have to do it in a hurry with a backup quarterback in the game in Blaine Bushong, who's done a nice job tonight. He has. Yeah, he really has. It's Wildcat football, first and ten. You know, I'm sure he gets his reps with the JV kids, so, you know, he knows the offense. They'll go first and 10 from the 40-yard line, 11-14 to go. This is Bushong in the gun. He's got trips off to his left. He's got a single receiver in the slot and one wide out to the right. Bushong takes the snap, throws back to the left. He's got his man out there. And he's hit immediately by the Defiance Bulldogs. That pass was to Grady Clayman Beasley. He's been their top target tonight. Boy, they closed quickly on that football, sure did. didn't they? Well, and it wasn't just one. It was two or three of the blue and whites that was coming after them. And now you're seeing with this 20-point lead by Defiance, the defensive backs are coming up and playing press coverage and not letting the Wildcat receivers really get off the line. They're playing that cover two with two safeties back deep. Bushong in the gun. He's got two to the right, two to the left. Nice pass across the middle as he's got his man out there for another root lumber first down. There you saw a nice throw from Blaine Bushong. Yeah, nice job by the five up front with pass protection. Zane Perkins on the catch there for the Wildcats. Makes it first and 10 on the 46. first down. Bushong takes the snap. He's under heavy pressure. So he goes to the middle, gets out to the left side. And here's a flag on the play. That'll come back as we're going to have a holding penalty. 
Nice patience by that young man. It was, it was in the area of holding. I don't want to say it was holding. A Kenton Wildcat lineman is down on one knee, and he's... Yeah, it appears to be... It is holding. Number 77, Bill Wilkinson. We've called his name quite a few times tonight. That'll back the ball up. Yeah, Kenton indeed next week. Doesn't get any easier for them as they're going to march over to Glaze County and play against Wapak right now, who is playing at a very high level. They, they, you know, they came out of the shoot, and I know they were disappointed, but you know what? When you practice, they always say as a coach, you want to get better from day one from when you start, and right now they're yeah. playing on uh, with, yeah. with high motor. and I've had them twice this year, Gilly, and right now they're playing absolutely lights out football. I had them at Van Wert, and I had them at Ottawa Glendorf. Well, they got a running back that is an absolute He's really Stud. good, Jason Ellis. He's really good. Yes, he's really good. There you saw another flag comes down. It looks like that's going to be pass interference on the Defiance secondary. So um, they call. And the young man from Kenton, Mr. Bushon, took a heck of a shot there too. Yes, he did. That puts the clock at 9.43 as we are under double digits here in the, the fourth quarter. Defiance. Bring up first and nine from the 45 yard line with 9.43 to go. Bushong's in the gun. He's got trips to his right. He's looking off to the left. He throws deep down the left side. It's picked off. No, it dropped. No. Number five, Rodenberger had the interception and ran into his own man. And Gilly, if he catches that on the sideline, he's got a pick six for sure. He sure did. Yeah, that's a, that's a football that he wishes he had back because he threw that not in the single, not in the double, but there was three blue hats in that vicinity. Very fortunate that was not intercepted. So the young sophomore with an errant pass there almost picked off by Defiance. And watch Defiance here as they're bringing guys up to the line. They're blitzing from the edge. And they've got a man, Collins, out there. And a nice screenplay, but it was just snuffed out. And there's another penalty. Yep. They're starting to get chippy. I yeah. think they got Kenton with a hold. Yeah, it is it is getting chippy, and the officials better get this one under control. And they will. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Veteran group. Holding call tonight here by the Wildcats. Yeah, just looking at Defiance's schedule. Next week, they go to Elida, come back with Bath. And obviously the big game is Salina at Salina. Who's, Tough environment yeah, to play. He's going to play a huge factor in the WBL. And race. then wrap up the season at Ottawa Glendorf. So three of their next four games are on the road. Nice pass by Bush on across the middle. And Zane Perkins with a good catch. And he was wide open, Gilly. And he goes towards the first down marker. It'll bring up third and about two until we get to a first down. Yeah, that was a heck of a job right there. Stepping up and letting that one rip. Nice pitch and catch. I think he had one the same way the first half. Bushong in the gun. He's got trips off to his right. Two receivers to the left. Bushong's going to keep it himself. And he's going to pick up another root lumber first down. Nice Blaine job Bushong by Blaine Bushong picking up the much needed first down for the Canton offense. See, if I don't think he cuts that back, I don't think he gets to the first That's down. That's a great point. That's a great point. You're right. That was great vision. Bushong, not the biggest player at 5'8. He can hide behind those linemen. He does a great job of utilizing his skill set. He's oh, a nice quarterback. He does. He has the athleticism, and he can throw the football. They bring it first and 10 from the 35, 8.35 to go. Bushong finds his receiver off to the left. This is Clayman Beasley off to the left. He gets a gain of about five yards. The one thing I notice about Bushong, Darren, is he gets the ball out quick. It's a three-step drop, and he's firing that Yeah, he ball. doesn't mess with it. It's no, gone. Irizarry on the stop there for defiance. Had to bring it second and four from the 29-yard line. 8.10 to go. Bushong in the gun. He's got trips off to his right. One in the slot, two receivers off to the left. Waiting to hear the instructions from his coaches. Play clock down to seven seconds. Bushong takes the snap. 
Throws deep down the left side. He's got his man out there. Beasley with a nice catch. What a great throw. What it absolutely was. And really with a fascinating part about this, how quick Beasley got out to this position and makes a nice catch on the sidelines. Yes, indeed. First and 10 from the 12 yard line. I just really like Bushong's moxie. He just stands in there and fires that ball. Yeah, I'm sure they'd like him to be a little bit oh, bigger. Oh, there's an errant snap as the ball gets away from Bushong, and that's going to be about a seven to eight yard loss. And that's the second or third time we've had a problem with the uh, snap exchange between the center and the quarterback. Yeah, that, that one's on the quarterback. That's the one he's got to look the football in. That was catchable, though. They bring up second and about 24 from the 26-yard line. Yeah, I'm sure they would like to see Bushong put about 20, 25 pounds on. Absolutely. And he will. He's going to throw off to the right side, and he's got his man out there. And a nice job of taking it back towards the first down marker. Maddox Hummel, the 5'9 freshman. There's a sophomore to freshman combination we're going to see over the next few years. Good job by that freshman catching the football, getting as much as he can back for him. And I said first down marker. I meant original line of <laughs> scrimmage. I was, I looked out there okay. and saw that marker. Third and 14, <laughs> Third and 14 from the 16-yard line. 6.39 to go here in the game. Bushong under heavy pressure is going to throw deep down the left side. And he's got his, oh, just out of the reach for number six, Beasley. And he, Darren, he had it in his hands, but it was just a little underthrown. Yeah, that's the key word. It was a little bit underthrown, but I'll tell you, the timing was there. He just didn't get enough mustard on that. Great effort there by Clayman Beasley to secure that ball. I said number six, Clayman Beasley number 12, obviously. That'll bring up fourth and 14 from the 16. Obviously, the Wildcats are going to go to, or go for it, excuse me, with 6.32 to go, down 38 to 18. Bushong's in the gun. He's got trips to the left, two receivers to the right. He takes the snap. He's under pressure. He throws across the middle, and everybody collided, and no flag comes out. And, boy, there was a lot of contact there, but it looked like everybody just ran together. Well, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I'm I'm wondering if both receivers ran the correct route or was there some confusion there because, yeah. you know, Beasley turns around, it's a touchdown. The, the football actually hit him in the back of the helmet. But a well-thrown ball. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A very well-thrown ball. And you're right. I think both receivers came together running maybe uh, similar routes. So that'll be a turnover on downs. Make it first and 10 from the 16. Defiance lead 38 to 18. And I'm sure the Defiance Faithful would like to see about a six minute and 27 yard, or 27 drive here. There's Abel. And a nice run off the left side. Abel Rubio, the ball carrier. Abel Rubio, the Ben the Bell Cow tonight for the Defiance Bulldogs. And we've got a Wildcat lineman down on the ground. Well, 10 to him on the field. We'll take a timeout in the booth. We're watching high school football. Back here at Kenton High School, 6-10 to go here remaining in the game. Second five for 21. Sipple's in the gun. He's got a man in the slot. They've got them kind of bunched together. The receivers are all bunched on the line. Off to the right side of the quarterback. They're going to hand the ball to Rubio. And, oh, Ziffel's going to keep it himself, and he's going to get another root lumber first down or a close to the marker. I think they're going to say it's a first down. We'll see what they call here. No, they're going to say it's just a little bit short. Short of the line to gain, third and one. Make it third and one from the He faked you number. out again, he didn't did he? He did fake me out again. Well, you know, it's dark out there. But what you does know, that say old. about him and his execution? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. It all starts with, you know, the execution, and he did a really good job there. Of hold on to that football. Clock continues to run. 5.20 and counting in the fourth quarter. Zippel hands the ball to Rubio. Rubio goes straight up the gut. And let's see. They're going to call it on the stop. Jaden Mustang coming in on the stop. 
Good job there by the Wildcats. Even though they did give up the first down, they did a really good job bottling it up. Tonight's first down sponsor is Root Lumber in Kenton. They have everything you need to get the job done, whether you're a contractor or do it yourself, or visit us at rootlumber.com. Root Lumber, our first down sponsor. So 4.42 to go in the fourth quarter, first and 10 from the 27-yard line. They're going to give the ball over to number 11, Anthony Wilders. He gets to the left side and a huge gain and another defiance first down. Yeah, Trent DeLong had an angle at him, but just wasn't steep enough right there. He got the corner turned, went for an extra 10, 12 yards. Good run there by that young man. And here you see exactly what Defiance wanted to do. They want to lean on this offensive line here. Which they, they took the ball over with six minutes and 27 seconds to go. Now we're at the 430 mark, and they continue to move the ball down the field with not much uh, opposition. Ziffel in the gun. He's got Abel off to his right. He's going to hand the ball to Abel. Or excuse me, Rubio. Good job there stepping up. Number 62, Matt Handel, the 6'1", 225-pound junior. For Kenton on the stop. Make it second and eight from the 49-yard line. We're at midfield. I would like to know time of possession the second yeah, half. Yeah, that's I mean, a big you factor. Can, you can see the Wildcats are, when you put your hands on your hips, and the physical play on both sides of the ball by both ball clubs is definitely taking its toll. There's going to be a lot of kids dinged up for tomorrow, and hopefully they can all get back to full health by next weekend. And bring up second and eight for the 49. Zippel takes the ball, hands the ball off to number 11, Anthony Wilder. He goes up the middle of the pack. And, and not a big deal for the Defiance Bulldogs because they want that clock to run. He's going to force Kent to take a timeout with 3.39 to go. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school football. WSN. Welcome back to Kenton High School. We want to thank our Porter sponsor tonight, the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. A lot of great sponsors tonight. Kenton Moose, scoreboard sponsor, the Home Saving Loan, needs to replay sponsor, Root Lumber, first time. It's great when we come to these small towns and the businesses show up and yep. uh, they represent, and it's, it's great to get to talk about them. And, and it's just it's a community event when uh, we come into town. Well, you know, you hear the PA address announcer mention pregame meals and yes. dental care, donating the mouthpieces. There's an extreme cost in high school athletics, and when you get generous contributors and sponsors, it definitely makes it uh, easier, doesn't it? Yes, it does, absolutely. You know, I'm, you know, we have to be very pleased with those donors, the WOSN. Ziffles pitches the ball back to Wilder. Wilder goes to the left side. Thought he was taken out of bounds, but uh, there comes a flag. And uh, there's two of them, I believe. Like two flags coming in. We'll see I think what that's the first about. one's going to be either a horse collar or a face mask. There, if everything holds serve right now. Defiance will move to four and one in the WBL, four, five and one overall. Kenton will fall to two and four overall and two and three in the WBL. So. Yeah, and it don't get any easier to go over and play a Wapak <laughs> next week. And, you know, Defiance is looking at three of their next four on the road. So that'll bring up first and ten as they – an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Is that what they called? That's what they called. It looked like a face mask, I believe. So okay. On the, on the far side. I saw when the play happened on the far side, it looked like his helmet got jerked a little bit. Okay. So Ziffel's in the gun. He's got Rubio to his right. He's got trips to the right. He's going to hand to Rubio and a nice job of the Kenton Wildcat defense of really plugging those holes up. But that clock continues to run with 3.20 to go. Roll them on the stop. Kenton's got two timeouts here, Darren. Defiance has three. You just wonder if they're going to use those timeouts. Well, I think they will if they get them in the third and long situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. 
under three minutes now at 2.57. And the clock continues to go. Second and 10 from the 25. Ziffel and the Bulldogs continue driving down the field. Ziffel pitches back to the man in motion as he goes to the far right side. He gets to the outside and gets knocked out of bounds. Ball carrier, number 45 for the Bulldogs, Jordan Wright. We've seen him a few times tonight. Yeah, great blocking up front, especially on the pitch. Rubio now got out there. What Coach Cooper needs to tell Jordan Wright, son, stay in bounds. <laughs> he yeah. went out of bounds. <laughs> I guarantee if that was <laughs> Mr. Ziffel, you know where he's going to go. <laughs> right. He's either going to slide on the ground or he's going to step out of bounds because <laughs> I'm telling you, there's been some head hunting going on tonight. Bring up first and 10 for the 14. Ziffel's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to Rubio. Rubio's just bunched up at the line. Good job protecting the football. Got both hands on it, secured it. Gilly, Defiance took the ball at 6.27 of the fourth quarter, and I made the comment if they can run this clock out, and they are doing just exactly that as we are coming to the point of the game. It'll be under two minutes. We're at 2.12 and counting. If you keep the ball out of Kenton's hands, you know, sure, they're absolutely. dangerous yes. offensively. Oh, they're really dangerous offensively. And We've number two, you set in a lot of fatigue because they've been on the field. And, you know, like I said, I like to see time of possession this second half. Ziffel in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to Wilder as he goes to the left side, tries to stretch it out. He gets a seam as he goes towards the end zone, and he gets in the end zone. Another Defiance Bulldog touchdown. With 146 to go in the fourth quarter, the Defiance Bulldogs lead the Kent Wildcats 44-18 to on the Kent Moose scoreboard. Big block there by Abel. So the Defiance Bulldogs will come into Kenton and walk away with a huge WBL victory. 146 to go. It looks like they're going to do a, uh, they're going to continue to go for the two-point conversion. Neither, not much of a kicking game from either Whoa. school. Yeah. A little razzle-dazzle maybe. <laughs> And there is oh the my easy, goodness. easy two-point conversion. A nice little razzle-dazzle play by the Defiance Bulldogs. So with 1.46 to go in the game, the Defiance Bulldogs lead the Kent Wildcats 46-18. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back here at Robinson Field at Kent High School. 146 to go in the game. The Defiance Bulldogs have taken control of this one as they lead 46 to 18. They will kick off to Defiance, or excuse me, kick off to Kenton. And really an undermanned Kenton squad right now, Darren, with some key injuries in some really difficult places. Yeah, and some of the kids have come back in to play, but like you said, you can't take away anything from Defiance, but Kenton's effort has been really, really good, but those injuries have played a huge part, especially well, here in the second half. Not only an injury to Johnson, the quarterback, but Kyle Thrush, the linebacker running back, has been was disqualified from the game tonight. And as you said, that, that could be a two-game penalty. Well, and this is where you got to come with your next man up mentality yeah. and depth and, and do some adjusting and moving around and give somebody else an opportunity to get back in there. Sure, and the absolutely. nice thing is there's, there's plenty of football left. That'll so bring up first and 10 from the 22-yard line with 1.40 to go. But again, we can't take anything away from Defiance's oh, effort right. either. I mean, they they executed to perfection the second half. And I'm sure Coach Turner would be the first one to, to say that. Bushong throws to the right side, and he's got his man out there. And a nice... Pickup of about 12 yards. You know, he has to, he has to feel good about his backup quarterback and what he's done tonight. And absolutely, this young man has came in in a very difficult spot, and he's played really well tonight, Darren. Yeah, he's you know, there's a big difference between playing JV football and varsity football. And he stepped right in tonight. He's been very composed. 
Looks like the word you used was moxie. Absolutely. Look at the timeout on the field called by the Wildcats as they try to muster up something here with 120 to go. So a big game in South Bend tomorrow, Darren. The, uh, by the time we broadcast this, we'll uh, maybe know a little more. And, uh, well, it's going to be interesting. No, it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to come down to Mr. McCord. Yeah, I think, say, yeah. Because I think you're going to see Notre Dame put eight in the box and try to shut the running game down and force him to beat him. But you know what? They got the best wide receivers in college football. Well, I was going to say, look, if Kyle McCord has a good game, I really believe the Buckeyes win that one. But uh, We can all set and rip on that young man, but I'll tell you what, he really played well. Now, granted, it was Youngstown State and Western Kentucky. Western yeah. Kentucky, You're but right. he played really well He's against Western Kentucky. He's gotten better Western each Kentucky. game. You right. betcha. There they got Beasley on the left side as he tries to break a couple tackles. Almost broke it, didn't he? Yes, he did. Clock continues to run. We're at a 110. Defiance leads 46-18. Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert. WBO action tonight here on WSN. Rodenberger on the stop. It's a gain of nine. Second and one. Push on is going to throw off to the right, and he's got a man out there. Another Root Lumbus first down. Over to Maddox Hummel. We've called his name quite a few times tonight. It's a Wildcat first down. 49 seconds to go. First and 10 from the 44. Nice open field tackle. I didn't quite see who that was, but Hutchison, I believe, on that far side. Push on throws to the middle of the field. And that was broken up, and now they're going to be. A, there's going to be a penalty. Looks like Rodenberger got there just a little bit early. I don't think it was. Was it Rodenberger? Okay. Yeah, he went over the shoulder just about at what half a second, a little bit too soon. My question is, it's nothing personal. No, right. No, no, it's nothing personal. That's the game. Oh, that's that, what you're saying. Or, Make it personal. What is that? Whatever he said. But Colorado and Oregon. Oh, what gonna, Deion Sanders oh, said. Yeah. It's personal. Okay, it's personal. Prime now, has his brought his the mom spark. coming yeah. on tomorrow too. <laughs> yeah. But he's done a great job. Oh, you know it's fantastic. His his recruiting is is, is really going to pay off. There's Bush on under heavy pressure, and he goes down. And he's sacked. Mr. Salinas. And the clock continues to run. And I believe Coach Turner is just going to let that clock go. And that will do it. They're not going to stop the clock. So that will do it from Kenton High School. The final score, the Defiance Bulldogs 46, the Ken Wildcats 18. Darren, your final thoughts on this contest? Well, good luck to both teams as we get ready to enter week seven. You know, Kenton is not out of the playoff picture, but they've got to tie some, some games together to get themselves moved up in their region. Defiance holds their own destiny. You know, they've got the three of the next four games are on the road, and we know that they still have to play Salina, but they got to take care of business one week at a time. I'm impressed with Coach Cooper and what he's bringing to the table because there was a period of time where Defiance really struggled, you know, with wins. Sure. And he's he's got the culture right where he wants it, and he's young, and, you know, they're going to win a lot more games for Kenton, you know, try to get healed up and get ready for your next game next week against a very good Wapak Ball Club at Wapak, Canada. That'll do it from Kent High School. The final score, the Fiance Bulldogs 46, the Kent Wildcats 18. Darren Gilbert, I'm Danny Holbrook, and our entire WSN crew. And we'll see you next week.